It's a bit of a dirty sort of secret because I guess you don't buy an apple and get an ingredients list of what you've been exposed to, whereas a lot of in- industries are very clear and transparent about what you are being exposed to. So don't get me wrong, pesticides do play a huge role in ultimately feeding 7 billion people. When you don't have access to pesticides, crop production is usually down about 40-50% due to like the insect activities like spoilage, rodents, funguses, soil-borne bacteria that attack the plants that are producing these fruits and vegetables. And look, they do play a critical role but they also come at a cost. So being in Australia, you would assume our regulations are the highest and they are in many regards in the food industry. But when it comes to the agricultural sector, there is a lot of oversight and a lot of these chemicals are looked at in the way that they're safe until proven deadly rather than the other way around. So proving that they're safe before actually using them. This is episode 106. I am so happy that you're here and thank you for joining my show, your coach, Helen Yuskovic. I am on a worldwide mission to help people get confident in putting themselves first because I used to put myself second my whole life. And because of that, I experienced every unhealthy relationship possible, an unhealthy relationship with myself, my health, my wealth, my intimate relationships, my family, my friends, and my career. I'm now living in an abundance that I used to just dream about. So I want to pave the way for you too. It's time, guys. It's time that you live in the life of your dreams as well. So let's take a step towards that right now. Here's subscribe to my podcast on your app now so that you always tune in to my new episodes. Good morning and welcome back to the show. I'm here with the amazing Phil Diasinos. Phil is like this entrepreneurial, visionary human being that just thinks on a whole different wavelength to most people. And I, <laughs> I'm i so excited to bring him back on the show to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is about produce and chemicals and the things that we ingest as humans. So firstly, Phil, welcome to the show. Morning, Helen. <laughs> Thank you so much for the introduction. Yeah, I just wanted to start by saying it's amazing what you do and you directly influence a lot of my immediate circle, training family members and that. So yeah, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for the amazing things you do and the contribution that you give to. So thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Phil. That means a lot. So Phil, I'd love to talk about you and just to allow the listeners to understand who you are. So can you just give us a history, a brief breakdown of who you are? your whole journey to this new agroponics venture that you're on. How did you get here? Yeah, so it's been a long journey. Look, I have a a passion to learn and health and helping people in general. So I guess I started my journey uh, going down studying forensic chemistry. I wanted to contribute and help basically solve solve crime. So I started studying that for three years. I found there was a few mismatches in the industry and my few efficacy issues. So then I changed my studies and went into a mechanical engineering chemistry double degree. Yeah, so we had the analytical elements, which was really cool. So I, I graduated that with honors and then I went on into product development in in the gas and heating industry, working on uh, gas heating solutions for bringing to the consumers. And then I went on to be a laser engineer for a few years, installing and helping set up uh, sheet metal manufacturing in- industries and factories and helping to get uh, greater efficiency and productivity to these customers. But then I felt like this wasn't fulfilling like a deeper rooted cause. In the background, I was having some health issues and a few family members experienced like cancer, which took me down another rabbit hole of researching health and what we're doing to ourselves and what we're exposing ourselves to unknowingly. And then it kind of awakened this passion. And so then I started to go into some more private ventures. I then went on to co-found the company Breakout Solutions with my business partner, Michael Hazilius, who's uh, brilliant in his own right. He's a fantastic tech entrepreneur. We got that company going and I've taken a bit more of a backseat lately there, but he still does a fantastic job in bringing crypto to the world, to a lot of people, and also with the vision of making it more accessible to more needy people, people that are in developing countries. And that's the ultimate vision to empower people that are impoverished. And look, the, the reality is so many people don't even have access to a bank account, which it's hard to imagine being in a, a developed country like Australia with all the opportunities that we have and we take for granted. And then, uh, yeah, so it just was this natural progression. I then came into contact with Sevda Aitanez, a good friend of ours from high school. And she introduced me to Laura Grava and Giam all fantastic people, all with very common mindsets, mm. self-sustainability, helping people. They've got Sevda and Laura have a big, a big background in fitness, personal training, competitive weightlifting, 
diet obviously is a, a strong is strongly intertwined with those industries. Jiam, you know, uh, a visionary in his own right, he is very into hydroponics and you know off grid living, sustainability. Mm. So I just felt like all our skill sets kind of intertwined, and yeah, hydroponics was born. Wow. So what is hydroponics? So hydroponics. So our vision is to help people quickly and easily learn how to create fresh and tasty produce or without leaving their house. So you don't have to have a green thumb. It brings the you know hydroponic technology, which is, is not a new thing, but in a in a simple and accessible way, affordable way to kind of dip your toe into the hydroponic setup and how you can safely, easily, almost autonomously grow fresh mm. produce that's you know tasty and you know most importantly pesticide free in your own home. That's so cool. Guys, the first time Bill said to me, I have this business, it's called hydroponics. And I'm like, like hydroponics? And he said, yeah. I said, you're making weed? <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 it's not weed. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, I live in the western suburbs here of Sydney. So you can take the girl out of Blacktown, but you can <laughs> never take Blacktown out of the girl. That's it. <laughs> West represent. So Phil. <laughs> So funny. I love the name. I, I love the name. But before we dive deeper into that, can you talk to us about produce and what we are actually eating, Phil? Like how many chemicals are we eating? You obviously felt there was a demand for this sort of situation and you obviously feel that maybe we are eating too many chemicals. What's going on? Yeah, it's it, it's a bit of a dirty sort of secret because I guess you don't buy an apple and get an ingredients list of what you've been exposed to, whereas a lot of in- industries are very clear and transparent about what you are being exposed to. So don't get me wrong, pesticides do play a, a huge role in ultimately feeding 7 billion people. When you don't have access to pesticides, crop production is usually down about 40-50% due to like the insect activities, like spoilage, rodents funguses, soil-borne bacteria that attack the plants that are producing these fruits and vegetables. And look, they do play a critical role, but they also come at a cost. So being in Australia, you would assume our regulations are the highest and they are in many regards in the food industry. But when it comes to the agricultural sector, there is a lot of oversight and a lot of these chemicals are looked at in the way that they're safe until proven deadly rather than the other way around. So proving that they're safe before actually using them. So it's quite surprising, like even with uh, DDT, the US banned it about a decade before Australia did. That's obviously a a very effective pesticide, but obviously it it came at a cost. It did replace arsenic-based pesticides, which obviously had the heavy metal elements, which weren't weren't good either. And we have evolved and come a long way since then. But the growing demand for produce kind of chokes the demand for good health overall. So look, we're not not eating huge quantities, but we are eating trace amounts. A lot of these are like bioaccumulating. So they're designed to like some of these are um, neurotoxins. So they're designed to kill insects, disrupt their nervous system and disrupt like acetylcholine production and, and the enzyme that helps break that down. And this causes the bugs to go into spasm and ultimately die and that's ultimately what they do to humans too so in small quantities we don't obviously see that reaction in a large quantity we we do but they do and a lot of these bioaccumulate so when there's plants and lizards and birds feeding on these pests that have eaten them they start to bioaccumulate in the food chains and cause other drawdown effects also by you know, crop dusting an area and wiping out a lot of the microbiome in the soil and taking out these insects from the area, it disrupts the food chains in other ways. So there's a lot of trickle down flow and effects, as well as obviously the health effects from consuming these products. Mm, Interesting. So I saw my friend, Phil, I was at her house one day and she had apples and I saw her, she was washing her dishes and she (laughs) She washed the apple with her sponge, yes, and then she rinsed it. And I said, did you just wash your apple? She was like, yeah. I said, is that good to do? And then she was like, why not? You're rinsing it off. I'm like, but doesn't it leave some sort of detergent on the apple? And she's like, well, it's either the pesticides or the detergent. Yes, uh, commonly done. You're completely correct. You're um, adding more chemicals to the mix. So. Whenever there's any sort of contact, there is some some permanent exchange and you're eating the detergent, which unless you're using particular types of detergents, that's a whole uh, another kettle of fish, but you're adding more chemicals to the mix. So we can wash it like using water and sometimes I even use some boiled water to like break up the wax off the apple and wipe it down. 
this helps. You can also discard the outer layers. This helps. But ultimately, uh, fruit and veg largely water-based and there are exchanges across the membranes and you are what you eat and same as the plant. The wow. plant, plant consumes what it's surrounded in. If it's surrounded in pesticides, it will be through the structure. And once again, look, a lot of these pesticides are designed to have a short half-life to, to break down and have lesser amounts by the time it gets to your table. Some of them don't. Some of them have, you know, half-lives of 10 to tw- 10, 20 years, which ultimately, like I said, leads to bioaccumulation. So yeah, we can wash them. And we can also, I'm sure you've probably heard of the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, which are mm-hmm. fruit and veg that are more susceptible to having higher concentrations of pesticides. So these are important things that we can also look at to kind of steer clear and target what we should and shouldn't be eating. And so then I guess you can kind of budget yourself so you could put more resources and money towards organic produce within the Dirty Dozen versus you know buying non-organic and cheaper alternatives in the Clean 15. It's also important to not fall into the trap that what you might Google as the Dirty Dozen might not be specific to your region. So the chances are you Google it, you'll get some US advice, which means not necessarily the same thing in Australia due to our regulations and pesticides used locally. For those listeners that have no idea what you're talking about, what is the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15? Great question. So, yeah, so the Dirty Dozen is 12 produce items that are more susceptible to having higher concentrations of pesticides. Mm -hmm. So like apples, celery, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, grapes, nectarines, peaches, potatoes, nut peas, spinach, strawberries, and capsicum are usually high on the list. So... Yeah, like I said, if you can potentially grow your own, ultimately is the best. So if you can have you know a backyard garden or yeah. a hydroponic solution, that would be ideal. You you know what you're putting in it. Otherwise, you know organic solutions are better. So you're, you're more likely to mm. not encounter these not nasty things. Whereas the clean fifteen is the, the the opposite. Where like fifteen items of produce: yeah, asparagus, avocados, cabbage, rock melon, cauliflower, eggplant, grapefruits, kiwi, mangoes, onions, papayas, pineapple, sweet corn, sweet peas, sweet potatoes and that's probably more US based list but yeah so th- these are items that are less have less accumulation of these and are, are less exposure to these pesticides and ultimately yeah. you consume less and a, a rule of thumb and like I said it's it's regionally specific and also it's a moving target if, if a particular pesticide was banned then you know some of those items might drop off the list conversely if a new pesticide is introduced which you know happen all the time there's over 8000 pesticides that, and 75% of that are still potentially accessible in agriculture. It's also important to look at where your produce comes from. So you might think, okay, I'm eating something that's on the clean 15 mm-hmm. in Australia, but if you're sourcing it from potentially a, a country in Asia, a country, you know, US, somewhere in EU, might have different standards, might have different exposure. And I think the other thing to note is that, yeah, like I was mm-hmm. saying earlier, Australia is a leader in many, many regards across many industries but when it comes to regulating pesticides we are probably more relaxed than most and i think we've got about double the amount of approved pesticides that are classed as being dangerous than the uk Mm. and yeah we have a large list that like about 80 items that are not used in the eu and the parts of the us that we still use so that's something to be aware of did you read the list of fruits somewhere or did you just know them off the top of your head? <laughs> no, I, I cheated. I, I did read it, but I, I do know most of them off by heart. A little less impressive. <laughs> I was going to say, how did you know the clean 15 and the dirty yeah. doesn't that quickly? That was insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Thanks, Phil. That's so Full on, all of that information. So thank you for all of that. But, Phil, before we go on, it's time for your first curveball. Are you ready to play? Hit me. Hit me. Phil, what's something that most people or the listeners don't know about you? Um, I don't know. What don't they know about me? Um, probably a lot. I try to keep pretty private in most aspects of my life. Yeah, I don't know. I still like to play uh, 90s video games with my son. I get out the retro <laughs> Super Nintendo time to time. I don't know, is that... This is a big question for you then. <laughs> uh, re- relive my childhood. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they were the good old days, Phil. Phil, <laughs> I love that one. Why do you believe that people should grow their own produce? What's the benefits? Big question and... Yeah, it's huge. The benefits are enormous. It's about taking control of your health. And like like I said earlier, I know how big you are on that and how it's so important to empower and give people the tools to take control of their health. And, and this is part of the arsenal for sure. If you grow your own food, mm-hmm. you know what's in it. 
you know what you're eating. You can see it grow in front of you. It can't get any fresher. You can literally just pick it off and eat it. It's not sitting in a warehouse. It's not susceptible to standards where people are happy for you to have exposure to rodent hair and insects and mm. be consuming it. It's directly fresh. It's grown in front of you. And you know what your family are eating. You know what your kids are eating. You know what you're putting into your body. And ultimately, you know, we are what we eat. It's also about a huge important factor. And, you know, the whole team is passionate about security and security of your yeah. your food source. So we saw during COVID, if you went back a few years earlier and said, oh, one day you're going to walk into the supermarket and it's going to be stripped bare. You're like, in Australia, come on, like there's so many safety nets in place. We've got great infrastructure and all this, but you know, walk in the supermarket now and it's, it's not surprising. It's, it's just become normal. You just look and you go, oh, there's no lettuce today or oh, there's, there's no toilet paper again or no, there's no. So what better way than to secure food on the table? We can't go too long without food. And the reality is it's also the education that comes with it because if we are faced with a circumstance where the supermarket, which is the food source to our, you know, a urbanized society is bare, then what do we do? We don't know how to grow our own produce. We don't have access to it. A lot of us don't have backyards. We're, you know, apartment living's mm. quite normal. It's empowering to know that you can grow your own food, you, you know what you're eating. And it, it's amazing how little space and little knowledge it takes to Leave, uh, leverage off technologies such as hydroponics. Yeah. My mum's from a village in Greece and my dad is from Croatia and our whole life we've had trees, plant, vegetation growing. So I don't know any Beautiful. different. And right now as I look outside, there's a full orange tree, there's a full lemon tree, there's a full grapefruit tree. And so I love the idea of people having something in the backyard, but Yes, I do want to talk about people that don't have a garden and as you mentioned, people that live in apartments. But firstly, it's time for your second curveball. Are you ready to play? Yep. Phil, what is your favorite form of self-care? Probably cold showers. Does that count? Yes, it does. I love cold showers. I've done them on and off probably the last uh, three, four years. And I've just ignited my passion this winter. I find it hugely beneficial. I believe there's lots of health implications. But aside from that, it's to, to wake up in the uh, morning and uh, conquer uh, <laughs> something as uh, insurmountable as walking under cold water for, for a few minutes. I, I think it's, it's uh, yeah. enormously beneficial for the mind yeah. and body and spirit. I think they're awesome and had one just before the podcast. Yeah. Best way to start the day. Oh, oh, I've tried so many times. I have to start with like warm and then I can go to cool. <laughs> and then, yeah, I get like instant shock. Yeah. And I'm like, everyone says you got to breathe through it. And I'm like, oh, come on, Helen, you're a meditation teacher. You can do this. But then it, <laughs> it does become easier. But uh, some days, some days it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Me and my best friend uh, during summer, we. Yep. did it differently where we went to the beach and we would jump in the water instead in the morning. And I'm telling you, sometimes it's actually delicious, the water, and yes. you would much rather be in there than under a cold shower because at least that way, I don't know, you can see the sun rising at the same time. It's a whole different thing but with the same benefits. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's a different way of doing it. And I think the the self-control of knowing <laughs> you can just reach for that handle and turn the water yeah. versus uh, at the beach, it's a bit more out of your control. But yeah, I think uh, yeah, cold exposure is great for the body and soul, yeah. Do you jump straight into the water or do you walk in slowly, slowly when you go to the beach? I try to jump in, yeah. I try the same as a shower. I, I start full cold and get straight in because you got to pull the Band-Aid off. It's, it delays the, the uh, inevitable so true. I'm a walker in her and I torture myself slowly as I walk in. Same with the water in the shower. It's like I torture myself slowly. It's like, why don't you just quickly do it and get it over and done with? Yeah, I used to be a bit like that, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I've learned different. <laughs> Phil, let's go back to the people without a garden, people that working full-time jobs, maybe two jobs, and people that maybe have never had a garden and that are listening and have just been inspired like where do they start yeah, it's a great question and as you know and pr probably are experiencing life becoming busier and busier and faster and faster with each generation with each each passing year so I by no means I do enjoy gardening but I don't spend a lot of time out there my, my brothers used to always laugh at me for having the longest lawn on the street because <laughs> I didn't prioritize that as uh, important but so look if you have no garden and you have no time there's no problem like 
like I said, the hydroponic setups, they, you know, they, they use 20 times less water. They yield up to eight times more produce. They, they're simple. They use less space. The, the plants are closer together because the, the root system can develop more in a downward direction. So it doesn't have to spread out as much. And they're on timed systems. So you basically, you set them up, you drop the seeds in, you set the timer. It turns on automatically for 12 hours. It turns off. It just does its thing. The, the pumps automatically turn on and off to aerate the, the water supply. And all you do is change the water you know, every couple of weeks, two, three weeks, change it, put new water, new nutrients, and away you go. And it's fast, sustainable, and simple. How big is this hydroponic setup? So we, at the moment, offer three, six, and 12 pod systems. We're talking about like 30 centimeters by about 15 okay. and about 400 high. And they've got expandable lights so you can raise or lower them with your plants. Okay. So that, that obviously, that's, that's a three pod system. So that can produce three plants. And if you know, you're know looking at a three to five week cycle, depending on plants, sometimes a little bit longer. So that, they're quite small. They can sit on your windowsill. That's perfect for like people in a, like an apartment if you just want to grow some fresh herbs break off the herbs add them to your foods and you can kind of have an abundant source all year round it's not susceptible to seasons as it's you know climate controlled it's inside you've got uh, the, the lighting the lights do provide some warmth to the plants as well uh, then you've got the six pod system which is about double so we're looking at uh, still like a solution which you just put on the center of your table then we've got 12 pot systems which are still quite small and they also become like a centerpiece because once the plants grow they're actually quite aesthetically pleasing and it's like having a you know a pot plant which you can leave in the middle of your table or leave on a bench and then uh, we're looking at it we're currently introducing and working on larger systems so we've got systems that you know go up to 108 plants and once again they're still suitable for apartments you could have it on your balcony i think they're about a meter by 400 by a meter so you could like tuck it away in a nook i've got a friend who's about to replace a fish tank that he's had sitting empty for years and he's just going to put it in his house and you know have have access to 108 plants so uh that's it depends on your setup, your lifestyle, but even like a 12 pod system is great to dip your toe in and have, and you can even stagger them, right? So obviously if you're, if you're growing 12 head of lettuce, uh, what are you going to do with 12 head of lettuce as so they all mature at the same time? But if you can plant, you know, a week later, a week later, a week later, so you have uh, staggered produce and even so you know, some of the ones with the like leafy vegetables, you can keep breaking them off and consuming them and they'll continue to grow. So you don't need sun? Not at all. So they use LED lights. And they cycle on so that you can, uh, depending on the system, some have uh, the flexibility, you can do 12 hours, uh, 14 hours or 16 hours on off cycles where the, it just does its own thing. It's got white, blue and red LED lights. So the plants are getting exposure to the full spectrum of what they need to grow the most efficiently. There are systems, some of the bigger systems we offer without the lights. So if, if you lived in an apartment, for example, you had full sun on your balcony, you can get like a, a lower cost system, which utilizes the sunlight and uh, you just have the pumps that, that uh, cycle the water through the, uh, through the root system. So no, no sunlight, no problem. So that like, yeah, if you have a week of rain where, you know, some plants might die or a week of 40 degrees days and you forget to water for two, three days, which, you know, can kill plants sometimes, it's not an issue with hydroponics. No sunlight, no problem. I think that should be your tagline. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> especially with with the, the winter, or the, the season that we've had with plenty of rain around, yeah, not much sun. Totally. Phil, it's time for your last curveball. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. Phil, how do you pull yourself out from a negative mindset into a positive mindset? So it's something that I've worked on and I think a lot of people have worked on and it's a constantly evolving thing. It's just, I think it's about grateful, gratefulness and gratuity and reminding yourself of what you have done, you're surrounded with, the good people that you're surrounded with and why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. So yeah, I think we all can get knocked down sometimes, but it's just about uh, getting up quickly and dusting yourself off and not losing sight of the bigger picture. So it's easy to focus on a small detail or, or a negative interaction, which can kind of derail you momentarily. But it, yeah, so just kind of taking a step back and just seeing it, it is for what it is and just thinking in 20 years time, am I going to look back at this moment and say, oh, this person cut me off. Not, you're not even, it's not even going to be part of the equation. So yeah, just about keeping sight of that big picture. Dust yourself off and try again. Yes, that's it. I love that, Phil. <laughs> Gratitude. It's so simple and it's so effective and it's free. Absolutely. Phil, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap it up for today? Yeah, um, I just, well, I want to give a shout out to our team. So, Sevda, Laura, and uh, Jiam, they look, like, they all work really hard. To, and we're working to bring as much information to people, to, to like the individuals, the, the families, the communities, to learn not just about hydroponics, but learning about like self-sustainability itself and 
and gardening and the knowledge, bringing back the knowledge, which, you know, our grandparents, like you said, it's, it's second nature to know how to plant and grow and feed your family because that was a necessity, which, which is now taken for granted. So it's important to empower people to have this knowledge and have the tools and tool set to, to achieve it. So even, like I said, if, if you're living in an apartment, you might think, I can't grow anything. I live in an apartment, but it's not true. And this technology exists. It can be achieved. So we've got our Instagram page, Igroponics. So we're spelled I-G-R-O-P-O-N-I-X, Igroponics. And we have at, so at Igroponics, we've got our Instagram. We're on our Facebook. We have igroponics.com. Once again, I-G-R-O-P-O-N-I-X. So I'll share the links with you, Helen. And we're also very excited to... Look, we love love what you do. We love your community. And we want to give you guys a head start if, if you're interested in coming on the journey with us. So we're going to have a 10% off our products with the code of... The coupon code of Helen. So yeah, just a little, little kickstart. And yeah, just happy to share as much as we can. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. Thanks for that, Phil. I feel like a lot of people will be inspired with this conversation and have this sense of, actually, you know what? I can have a little setup in my home. I can have a little setup in my apartment because I find that yeah, people do want to have plants and vegetation. It's just they feel that they don't, one, know how to do it or have the time to do it. So it's really great that you're providing this new system to make it accessible to people. It's so exciting. And thank you for that discount code. That's amazing. So I'll put all of your links in our show notes so that everyone can go and stalk you and find you. And yeah, I Please do. love a um, picture of these hydroponics setups so that I can see what they look like. Absolutely. Happy to share that. And like you said, more than happy for anyone to reach out if they've got any questions to myself or the team. And that's what I said. It's just about educating and, and helping people to live their best life. And, you know, food, as you know, it, it's the source of so much of that. It's your energy source. It's one of the pillars of health. So definitely very important. 100%. Thanks for your time today, Phil. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Helen. Bye. Have an amazing day. Thank you times infinity for spending time with me. It really means a lot. Putting yourself first will really help escalate your goals, your dreams, and I love being on the journey with you. So make sure you come and tell me on my Instagram at whole health, which is H-O-L underscore health and comment below this podcast photo to share your thoughts on my show today and if you enjoyed it please leave me a five-star review on itunes or spotify so that i can keep bringing amazing value to you i'm sending you truckloads of love power and joy bye for now